getting this thing started. Um, how would you describe what exactly it is that you do? You know, what is uh, Inspired Evolution all about? The Inspired Evolution, there's the long answer and then there's the short answer. So <laughs> the Inspired Evolution fundamentally was birthed out of me being inspired to evolve. Um, I was in this, well, I'm very conscious of the work, the weight that words carry, mm -hmm. um, but I'm still finding it very difficult to, when I describe this, to dance around these words. But I was in a soul sucking sort of situation when I was working in my corporate nine to five grind as a construction uh, manager, project manager in a construction organization. And um, yeah, I did that for about seven years. And every single day that I was there, it just felt like, well, I guess I'm familiar with your show, so I can probably describe it this way, but I'm not sure if for those that are not matrix buffs, pardon me for just a sec, but you know, you go along, um, to the second movie of the matrix and Morpheus takes Neo back to the machine city, which is the actual reality as it is now. It's like the year 3000 and something mm -hmm. and machines are actually running the city and everything. And, you know, Morpheus turns around to Neo and goes, believe it or not, it's humans that scorch the sky. The sky is all black. Um, thinking that the machines would not be able to operate because they rely on solar power and solar energy. But in their infinite wisdom, the machines discovered that it's fine that we don't have solar energy because humans are a great source of energy. And now humans mm. are grown in these fields and there's just all these red pods of people just growing in these pods and fields and humans are now grown. And the matrix is in those pods, everybody's plugged in thinking that they're living a reality um that is not actually the reality that they're living in and you know they think they're living in the year 2000. pretty dark place to start but nonetheless that's <laughs> kind of you know the energy harvesting conversation touch wood was um it was really heavy heavy energy um going into work every day feeling like you know and you know i joke when i share this from stage you know i had my midlife crisis in my 30s because you know i worked from 6 a.m to 6 p.m six days a week not including oh. the overtime so i just put in the same amount of hours that people yeah. put in their nine to five yeah. um up front yeah. and so it was an intense and it was an intense energy it was an intense um environment and it was very demanding um and me being a type a personality was always you know geared to sort of try and over deliver um so it just was a great recipe for me to be pushed into places where yeah things that weren't in alignment were like you know the the light was shone on it really heavily and it was like rubbing the cat the wrong way to the nth degree and that's where the term you know i don't use it lightly it literally felt soul sucking and going along to the job mm -hmm. every day for seven years now i'm super clear on now as a you know everything the inspired evolution has you know supported me in learning and developing as to why that wasn't in alignment and what alignment looks like and how to come into alignment and i'm sure we can discuss that mm. further in the podcast but ultimately i was inspired by all these people such as yourself incredible podcasters coach speakers authors living life on their own terms doing these creative ventures having an impact and being able to support themselves through the things that they were having an impact on and i was like i did pretty well at school touchwood like i should be able to figure this out <laughs> like i'm not you know, I'm not the sharpest tool in the toolkit, but I'm pretty sharp, you know, mm -hmm. touch wood, if I can mm -hmm. say so myself. <laughs> but yet I seem to be in this real dead end. And it was really hard also because by society standards, I had completely made it, you know, like it was this incredible job, paid really well, you know, I was a highly decorated student, got a very illustrious job and I was doing it and I was making it, but it, I was successful, but I wasn't fulfilled um, at all, you know, and so it was quite a dark place to be. So yeah. that was the birth of the inspired evolution. Everybody that I was inspired by, I was ready to evolve and follow in their footsteps. And I didn't know how I was going to do that. So I set the podcast up as a bit of a school for myself, inspired to evolve um, every week, now twice a week, interviewing in people such as yourself, you know, sharing their insights, their wisdoms, learning from them in terms of what they're up to in the world and how they got to where they're going. Um, spirituality, entrepreneurship and all that sort of stuff. And that's been the journey of the inspired evolution. Now that's my personal inspired evolution. But if I'm honest with you, the vision is far larger, you know, like it's, you know, the world is transformed <laughs> in the inspired evolution through, you know, the individual transforming and, you know, their relationship with their consciousness, um, you know, turning around actually has a massive impact on how we treat the planet, how we treat each other. Um, 
you know, little things that are big things. You know, a third of the world throws its food out. A third of the world is still dying of hunger. Like what the, yeah. you know, like there's all these low hanging fruits that we can address yet we don't, um, yeah. you know, so, you know, there's a lot in the inspired evolution. It holds a massive vision for just a future that, you know, isn't operating from our shadow aspects as much as the current reality is. Um, and that's probably the, the shortest way to put it. Mm. Mm. Powerful stuff. Well said. Um, I think that is the journey though, in a general sense for most people is to realize like, Hey, this ain't working. This ain't it. Um, something's going to change. And then, you know, you either stay on that same path or you tread another path and you do change up how we live and uh, hopefully find some kind of peace, joy or happiness throughout our own evolution. That's pretty much it. It's like you realize what isn't it to realize what is it. Um, Yeah. So let me ask you this, like, uh, what did you evolve into? You know, what have these interviews and other endeavors led you to as a person in terms of like how you view life altogether. I know that's a very, that's a, mm. that's a big one, but if you could mm-hmm. explain like, uh, cause you explain like how you got on the wavelength of this work and how to change, but how have you actually changed for the better? Like, would you be able to explain that? Yeah, absolutely. A few points in there. So I guess to start with, um, we, I was very blessed, touch wood, to be born in an Indian family. And so that gives me, you know, just direct access. And I'm not saying that spirituality doesn't live in other places, but, you know, India is this real, it is a special place, let's just call it that, Mm -hmm. for spirituality. Um, And having that embedded in my roots, um, going back to India every year as a kid and just seeing, you know, so much of just a, a different value set in a culture where, you know, even till today, it's one of the last places on the planet where, you know, the the rishi or the sadhu or the guru is worshipped more than the CEO, right? <laughs> it's, that, um, yeah. it's, it's one of these last meccas, if you will, um, where spirituality does reign king. Um, and I believe rightfully so, but that's my belief system. You know, it's, everybody's entitled to their own belief system as to where all the things lie. And so... There's always been that relationship with touch wood, call it where you will, universe, God, something higher, Mm. Um, which I think is important to acknowledge out of the gate because when you're feeling like you're out of alignment, you know, it's useful to know that there's, you know, your personality and then there's your soul, there's your ego and then there's your spirit. Um, And potentially the bit of you that's squirming is just the personality, is just the ego. And potentially it's squirming because you know, great spirit or, you know, the bigger you, the higher self, whatever you want to call it, is actually trying to calibrate you back into a line. Then that's why you're facing all these challenges. Yeah. I can articulate it now, right? But when you're going through it, and it's the first time you're going through it, you're going through like dark night. There's all like your whole world is just crumbling and you're like, what? Mm. I am not meant to be juiced and blended this way. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like it is, um, I'm making light of it. And so, yeah, you know, we call it the conscious perspective. Um, and there's that ability to afford us perspective, right? Like when you zoom out a little bit and you can see, you know, this is what the bigger me is doing and this is what the little me is doing. Mm. So that being the first piece around, you know, there's always been this relationship in the belief of something more, um, which has been really handy. <laughs> Let's just put it that way lightly. Yeah. And then the fundamental tenant, the way that I guess I start most of my coaching journeys, um, you know, in direct response to your question, how do you perceive the world? Um, what perspective, it's really that we are the universe looking in on itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is really the place where I start. And for me, you know, you could just sit there and, oh, I've I've just sat there and contemplated this to the nth degree. It is such a trip, right, that the universe somehow is folded in on itself, bent in on itself, and it's looking at itself and it's marvelling at itself through this experience of Amrit through this experience, you know, of, you know, like all these different people, this experience of Gary, like, it's just like, what Mm. is going on? Like, it is such a trip. Yeah. Um, (laughs) And so from that point, you know, it becomes really interesting to go, okay, maybe there is a purpose to why I'm here. So I believe in purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a big part of what my coaching work is. And this is, you know, let tales into how did I find who I became? So, you know, in that process, there's a reason the universe is looking in on itself, um, deeply embedded into that 
one of the fundamental tenets that alludes to us that is, you know, in, like woven into the fabric of our experience of reality is curiosity. Yeah. Your curiosity is quite, well, it is sacred because the universe is curious, mm -hmm. you know, because you can't deduce much from the fact that it's looking in on itself, but you can at least deduce that. It's like it is curious. Mm. Like, why is it looking in on itself? Mm -hmm. um, so that's something primordial, let's call it that. And then in order to understand how this personality that we have, um, this persona that we have, this ego that we have, this identity that we have is trying to navigate its way through the world with the greatest ease and flow, let's call it that, um, the, the way I describe it, and pardon me, I'm Indian so I can make this joke, but like your values are the pillars of your temple, <laughs> pillars of your temple. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, my body is a temple. Um, but yeah, the, the, you, your values are really set, like fundamental to that. So if you understand that, you know, you are the universe looking on yourself, there is this life energy that's flowing through your system, through your being, who are you really? Mm -hmm. Well, it's like your values. So my values are connection, contribution and celebration. And the temple mm -hmm. of me, the personality of me stands on these pillars. And what that really means is as long as I'm connecting and I'm contributing and I'm celebrating, the life force, life energy flows through me freely, abundantly. We were discussing before I rocked up to today's podcast, like, you know, it's been, um, I've just had a son two weeks ago. So, you know, there's a bit of sleep deprivation and stuff going on, you know, can be a little bit tired. But when you rock up to do what you're meant to do, like in this conversation, the words are tumbling out of my mouth. You know, it's like there's flow going on because touch wood, I humbly believe this is what I'm meant to do. Um, and you can feel it as a quality, right, mm. when you're in flow. Yep. Um, and that is life flowing through you and you drop into flow states because the identity drops out of the way and it is kind of sacred as you're living out in alignment mm. to your values. And so, mm. yeah, I think it's really important to understand what your values are. Mm. So all of that to say I found ways to connect, contribute and celebrate um, through podcasting. There's a lot of connection. There's a lot of contribution. There's a lot of celebration. Mm. Um, coaching deeply, one-on-one -on -one journeys, a lot of connection, really deep connection, a lot of contribution and celebration um, and public speaking, you know, connection, contribution and celebration. So that's really what I get up to in the world. Um, but these are all just containers that facilitate my values. Um, mm -hmm. I've been on a bit of a trip recently um, just because there's been a lot of feedback. I've been doing this for about six years now, six to seven years, mm. um, the podcast itself. And over time, like it was all about spiritual entrepreneurship. Um, but as I've been growing and growing, there's been more of this feedback that actually the value that I bring to the world is, you know, this spiritually aligned living. Um, and so I'm still struggling to drop into the moniker of like spiritual guide. <laughs> it feels very... Um, guru-esque and i guess being indian there's a lot of weight that that carries that i'm struggling to adopt um but life coach is very easy to adopt um mm. and it's still that you know it's it's got a lighter sense to it so i guess it's deeper than that but i'm just yeah i bring a lot of baggage to words as you can probably tell <laughs> <laughs> through this podcast you. today so life coach leadership coach for those that are looking to live spiritually aligned mm. um and that's really what the inspire the bush and podcast facilitates and all of that as well that's awesome man yeah um connection contribution celebration the three c's that's awesome yeah the three c's it's handy that they're three c's um, <laughs> it's wonderful. it helps me probably remember it a little bit better <laughs> <laughs> yeah help me remember uh that's good do you think to a certain extent all of our values come down to that the you know the holy trinity of the three c's because i do i feel like it's in a simplified version of like what it means to have purpose as a human being it, it kind of that's really good it's a good summary of it at least I mean, I, given the, the work that you're doing in the world, given the work that I'm doing in the world, I'm not surprised that you feel that way um, because I can imagine connections huge for you given that, you know, you're podcasting as well, connection, contribution, celebration. Like I imagine that there'd be a real synergy between your values and my values and hence yeah. why we're here having such a deep, robust <laughs> conversation that flows. Mm -hmm. But each individual's values are completely different, right? Um, you know, and, and, you know, I can bring anybody into the equation, but, you know, we just, I'm, I'm not even going to point fingers because then it, you know, becomes polarizing. Um, but yeah, just everybody has different values and it's, and rightfully so, right? Because the universe already created Amrit to look in on the universe in a particular lens. And then it's created Gary to look into the universe in a particular lens. Remember, we are all the universe looking in on itself. None of us is superfluous to the grand design of it all, right? So someone else is created to look in from a different lens. And that lens, I almost see it as like, you know, the, um, the hexagonal, 
prism through which bees look in the world, you know, those like that grid, that hexagonal grid. Yeah. And those are your values. That's how we're meant to each be looking in at it. So someone's meant to be like there are people like even my wife, you know, she's got a very different value set to me. Her highest value is integrity. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's useful to know like right now we're like, like super philosophical, high up in the clouds, quite meta in this conversation. But it comes down to the practical things. Like I remember we were moving out of a building one time, uh, my wife and I, and, you know, we'd been renting and we had to book an elevator. We went to go see the building manager. This guy was like, you know, sometimes you just meet people and they're just like, oh, my God, I can't believe you've been living life this way. <laughs> you are just, <laughs> yeah. someone's taken the jam out of your donut and you've just been like grumpy forever. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, when I saw this guy and he's just like, he was just toxic to be around. And so we, you know, booked our, ele- like our, our elevator for the date we were leaving and well, we just got out of that room. Afterwards, my wife's like, what? she was my girlfriend back then. She was like, why didn't you say something to him? And I'm like, say something to him. And, you know, as a young adolescent male, it's a, it was a ripe opportunity for me to be like, oh, I'm not man enough for her, <laughs> you know, like I didn't say the right, like what, you know? Mm-hmm. And I checked in for a sec and luckily I'd just been doing this body of work on values and I was just like, was I ever going to say something to this guy? No. And I was like, why is that? And I was like, ah, oh, because my eyes value is connection. So I just wanted to disconnect from the situation and get away from it because there was no, it wasn't a connection that I wanted to build. So I was just in and out, get what you need done and let's go. Yeah. And I had a quick glance and this is the interesting thing, right? As you get clearer on yourself, somehow you don't decode the matrix in some way, but in some way you kind of do, you look around at someone else and you're able to see their mm-hmm. values pretty well as well. Right. Mm-hmm. So then I looked across my life and I'm like, oh, <laughs> Of course she wanted me to say something. Her highest value was integrity. Mm -hmm. So in her integrity, that person needed to know that it's not okay to speak to people this way, right? And that's how integrity would behave. But connection's just like, I don't want to be here. See you later. And so in that moment, like, you know, that's a small interaction, but in there, like my whole relationship, you know, I didn't have to go into a whole thing around it, which was like, oh, I'm not mad enough. I'm not, I need to speak. I need to do more. I need to, oh my God. You know, all those projections were just surrendered. It was just like, actually... I was always going to behave this way. Those are her, that's how she would like to operate. You know, and she was asking me to operate from her value set, which is never going to, it's not a recipe for success. And I could just drop it. It's like, fair enough. I get where you're coming from, but it wasn't my place to say anything. I would never say anything. It's not the man that I am. Mm. Yeah. Boom. So that's like a little, a little thing. And then it comes into big life decisions when people go, do you want to go down this career path or this career path? And then you can make decisions based on your values really quickly as well. You can just audit things. Does it give me an opportunity to connect? So give me an opportunity to contribute. Just give me an opportunity to celebrate. If I can say yes, 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 bang, I'm doing it. You know? mm-hmm. um, if it's if it's no, then it's like, mm, maybe this isn't for me. It might be a great opportunity. Just like my construction gig was like, it was an amazing opportunity. Like it was yeah. incredible. And it is the right opportunity for someone out there. It just wasn't right for me, if, that, if I can just say that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Now, do you feel those three C's of your value set um, are sort of intuitive. They just kind of, they run themselves in a way. They run you. Like, you don't really have to think about it. Like, when you're in touch with your values, you sort of just, the decisions make themselves when you're really aligned. Yes. And I'd even extrapolate your question a little bit to sort of say, and that's where a lot of, I think, existential angst comes from for a lot of people, touch wood. And this might be a bit, I don't want to program anything in for anybody's journey, right? So I'm just, again, conscious about words. And, you know, when you're listening to a coach, some people end up handing the power over to a coach and I just don't stand for that sort of stuff. Like we're all individually empowered. So just little asterisks there. But one of the things that is possible is like when you're not living in alignment to your values, you'll remember like we were describing personality and I was having this tough time. Like my soul was being sucked out while I was living out of alignment yeah. to my values. <laughs> yeah. Um, so extrapolating your question a little bit, cause you're asking about the positive aspect of it, but the negative aspect of it is also available, right? Like the shadow, like if we're not living in alignment to our values, things don't flow. Things aren't intuitive. Things are hella hard. Mm. Yeah. And it's, and now I look at it and I've kind of gone through the existential crisis of like, what do I do as a purpose coach when really life is already calibrating your purpose in some way that existential angst is your life coach. That stress is a healthy stress. It's trying to bring you back into calibration. Like you've got one life that you know of, touch wood. Maybe you're reincarnated, maybe you don't. Your personality don't know, mm. right? Your your ego don't know, your identity don't know. 
So it's here to do something and you're not facilitating what it's put here to do. You're buying into all the marketing, the social stories, the collective, you know, conscious stories that, you know, just help a bunch of things that we can talk about further. <laughs> but nonetheless, you know, it's like feeling that angst that is quite a quite a blessing, really, touch wood, when you zoom out on a bigger level. So, you know, if you're not living in alignment, you can have a look at how unintuitive things feel, how resistancy feels. Things. Like literally I use the word soul sucking and not lightly, you know, how like grindy and how difficult things feel. So naturally then you can sort of flip that on its head as well. You know, the antithesis is also true when you're living in alignment. Yes, touch wood, you know, um, and that's one of my favorite words, alignment, by the way. Yeah, um, I like it too. Yeah, when you're. <laughs> when you're living in alignment things flow absolutely um you it is easier to be connected to your intuition um i think you're connected to your like intuitively your values are always present always trying to emerge in your life mm. and if you can you know allow them to emerge healthily yeah then you then you have more flow um things do feel a bit more intuitive and a bit more flowy for sure mm. yeah man um it's good stuff yeah now how do we get aligned? <laughs> How do you get aligned at least? What does this alignment process look like? Yeah. So, the, you know, it's, um, I'm conscious there's, there's most of the people tuning in, we're tuning in from the Western world, right? So your, your left brain logic has been groomed a certain way to modulate your experience of life, um, to a certain degree in a certain way. So the guess, the best place that I have found that I always start with coaching is let's just get clear on your values, right? So for those that are tuning in right now, right here, um, 20 minutes from now, you could be as clear on your values as I am. So I put together a masterclass. It's inspiredevolution.com forward slash values. It's as easy as that. Inspiredevolution.com forward slash values. You'll go there 20 minutes from now, you will have your connection, contribution, celebration, but whatever your values are, right? Could be beauty, strength, and courage. Whatever it is that literally is the pillars of you, you have that clarity, right? Can I ask you something? How many first... usual pillars are within a person? You know, is it usually go by three or is there a certain yeah. number or limit? It's a great question. So not everybody has three core values. Some people have two. Some people have one really governing value. Uh. Um, I've done this work individually one-on-one -on -one, like there's been over 300 coaching clients now and i would say 90 percent of the time it's been three core values yeah um and that's just i don't know why like it just I, it's probably because i'm coming with three core values so people are adopting that as a bit of a framework and a methodology for three mm. um like my top value is connection connection is everything that you know runs things mm. then the next biggest thing is contribution the next biggest thing is celebrations so if someone said what's your top value I could isolate it to one and be like, it's connection. I see. Right? Touch wood. So all of that to sort of say, it's up to you how you, you know, discern it. When you go through the exercise, you will have, you know, your top seven to 10 values is generally what you end up with. But then it's handy to carry your top three in your consciousness or your top four. And you'll mm -hmm. feel which four are like most important for you and the rest kind of do relate but it's not something you need as part of your everyday awareness to carry with you to sort of modulate your human experience with, if that makes sense. I got you. Yeah. Um, and the process ca ca like carries you through that as well. You don't have to have three. Mm -hmm. um, you could have two, you could have one just with, you know, and it's, it's all based on what speaks to you really deeply. Mm -hmm. So, but I've just found that for most people it is three, um, but it doesn't have to be. It's a great question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something about three, you know, something about three, I think, in the in the ethos of the human experience, like the Holy Trinity, sort of quantum, you know, almost like past duality. I think there is something about the number of three that is a whole rabbit hole in itself. But I do think there is something mm -hmm. about that. Um, but yeah, sorry, I interrupted like the alignment process. Like, so how do yeah. we go about getting aligned? So ultimately, once you've got clarity on your values, um, I was lucky because I already had well i went through a previous challenge in my life which was you know a struggle with depression for a long time and that brought me meditation and mindfulness as this tool in mm. my toolkit so for the longest time i was a meditation teacher um, because it was just given me so much right um and so you kind of want to couple the two things together not necessarily meditation but self-awareness right so once you've got your values you need a healthy level of self-awareness to be able to go and meditation cultivated that for me mindfulness cultivated that for me but it doesn't have to be that for you I've just come to learn through all the coaching 
that I facilitated. As long as you've got your values, you take a look at yourself and go, hey, what is, where do my values show up in my relationships, in my free time, in my spare time, in the work that I do, in my hobbies? Like, you know, if I'm going to the gym and I'm working out, like, does it show up there? You know, am I podcasting as a hobby? Like, is it showing up? Like, so you can really just do a quick audit. You just take a quick look at like the dimensions of your life Mm -hmm. um, and go, hey, like, where do I feel like my values are most mostly showing up and you find oh that's why that that ta- that particular task energizes me or that's really why i find such and such really draining or i find you know this piece of work really draining and you know i can do this at the, like this is a tough thing to do but people find it really hard to do but i just do it all the time effortlessly because it's in alignment to me so mm. you'll get this really clear picture like a resonance from there it takes a little bit of courage mm-hmm yeah because then that's where you know there's going to be a fear of letting go of certain things because Mm. of all the baggage that comes from society telling us we have to live a certain way yeah Mm -hmm. right and then you go okay but i know that my values are this and this is my kind of divine experience of being a human and being alive and i need to cultivate more of this Mm -hmm. To feel more flow, touch wood, because Amrit says, <laughs> touch wood, you know, take take of this what you will. Um, this is just my humble awareness and understanding of how it goes. So, you know, I, I, I'm conscious, I deeply believe in what I believe in, so it sounds very absolutist, but, you know, mm. so, sorry, and I make, I like to make light of things as well, as you can tell. <laughs> no, that's um, good. But yeah, so in there, like, you know, getting clear and going, okay, so this is where I feel most aligned, this is where I should be investing my energy. Yeah. Right and invest your energy into that space, cultivate more and more of that. And that's really where, you know, the coaching journey that I support is basically cultivating those sense of things and, you know, believing in that, that for other people, and they, it's good for them to have the ecosystem of like being in coaching with myself, because I've coached enough people now to know that it is possible to live life out on tangents, you know, which feel like tangents when you're in the mainstream. But when you get out there, you're like, oh, this is a perfectly normal reality. Like I've got a you know, lady I was coaching, she used to run like a home loan business where she had all these people working for her. And now she's got this website, which is basically selling adventure gear. Mm. And she makes more money doing that than what she was previously doing. And she loves adventuring and she's like mm. always reviewing gear, writing blogs. She's having a great time. Mm. And it was just like, but it was, it seemed so far. It's like, I can't do that. Like, what, you know, so that's just a low, like one example of so many, but you know, there's a lot in there that, you know, requires you to face up to because the courage is required because society programs us a certain way that you've got to live this way you've got to live a certain way your family has expectations of you your friends have expectations of you and it can be very rubbing the cat the wrong way to sort of go out there and actually live in alignment to your values Um, but once you know your values you know it doesn't have to happen overnight and naturally things will start to shift and flow already just through the awareness of having your values but if you can afford yourself some awareness the next step is then courage. Take some courage to cultivate more of that space in your values. For some people, it's massive shifts. For some people, it's incremental, small, small shifts. And then eventually, you'll start to find that you're living more alignment in your values. It's, you know, it's not, doesn't have to be super complicated. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just a matter of cultivating that. The, the challenge then becomes for some people, which is like, I want my whole life to be dedicated to my values and I want to make my living in alignment to my values. Mm. Absolutely. That's a longer journey, right? Mm. But generally, if you're feeling that existential angst, you can just start by getting aware of your values, cultivating some time in that space and enjoying your hobbies, you know, finding ways to really cultivate it. And you'll find a lot of the pressure in your system gets alleviated. You know, for some people, it doesn't have to be to live a life completely in alignment with their values. Some people have a job that doesn't necessarily line up to all of their values, but lines up to one or two of them really well, but like their third one's missing. Right, or their second one's missing and they just got one value. But that enables them to like fundraise or donate or spend all this time because it's just like, oh, you know, let's just take a random example. I build websites. I don't necessarily love them, but I love design and aesthetic and beauty. You know, so beauty is one of my values. And so, but it gives me like, I can work from home and I only work two hours a day, five days a week. And then the rest of my time is just spent really spending time in nature, facilitating music, workshops, and this sort of stuff that I love doing. It's not the end of the world, yeah? Like, you know which value shows up here. And it actually is quite therapeutic to know, okay, well, the reason this sort of doesn't feel great at times is because my other two values don't show up. I've just got the one value showing up here. But I'll put up with it because it gives me the opportunity to fund everything that really everything else shows up in, right? Mm -hmm. So it helps the experience along a great deal. So get clear on your values. Afford yourself some self-awareness. 
a little bit of courage and then take the time to cultivate your values um, in the areas that show up the most. Mm. And then, you know, you can make a decision in terms of how deep you want to go with that um, or not. Mm. Mm. Wow. Well said. Oh man, this is good. That's good stuff. <laughs> I've never talked about values or never had anybody else talk about values like that, but I've always known it, it was a thing. Like I, I, we all have values, but I guess it's just if we're aware of them or not, you know? Yeah. And Thank you. That's really uh, like wonderful to receive and reflect upon as well. Um, I think for most people, value, well, because of the organizational space that values have occupied, value is this sort of monetary conversation in some ways, right? Like it's still yeah, like that. Literally. Um, mm -hmm. Like what value do I bring to the world? What do I value? And that is absolutely true, you know, but that's so surface and one dimension to the whole thing. It does apply to your entire spiritual being if you can get really clear. And so, Again, you know, we are the universe looking in on, on yourself and it is this massive mystical experience that we're having. It's just values are these real awesome bits for the left brain logic to grip onto. Mm -hmm. And most of us are coming from these Western like identities where it's like, okay, cool. I can really grip onto this and modulate my experience based on understanding that. So yeah, thank you for that feedback. It's really awesome to hear. Um, mm. Yeah, I imagine there's probably someone else out there that's, you know, uh, promoting values from Somewhere. a spiritual perspective, but maybe not as good yeah, as you though. Should... <laughs> ah, come on, <laughs> keep me humble. Bro. Keep me humble. <laughs> Thank you for your kind reflection. No, words. seriously, appreciate that. Seriously, it's well said. Thank Open my eyes mm -hmm. to value sets. Um. So yeah, value implies we hold it dear because we, f at least in a monetary sense, we hold it dear because we get something from it, right? Like mm. this is fifty dollars, and I'm gonna get. $50 value out of whatever it is. Um, so what do we get out of holding these value sets in our being? Like, what is the value in holding values? <laughs> you know what I'm getting at? So yeah, like, yeah, totally. why totally. follow this path? Why decondition from the values of others, of the society, the society per se? Society set for you, yeah. yeah. And to be honest, it's, it's it, in, a, in a word, spiritual flow. Um, Ease, you know, like, less resistance. Yeah. Yeah. And just, well, and also, you know, flow, if we decode flow from, you know, flow research collective, Stephen Kotler, I've had him on the podcast a few times, the qualities of flow, spaciousness, timelessness, effortlessness, mm. and richness of mm. quality in your perspective as you're experiencing things. When he, when he wrote the book on flow towards the end of the book, he goes, oh, you know, and people that really feel flow and step into flow start to, you know, build their whole life around flow. And I was, you know, I, I read a lot. So, you know, and maybe I'm just, I, I don't know. I don't have to say that. But when I read it, I was like, oh, you know, drink your own Kool-Aid much. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, so that sounds so judgmental. Um, but really, I was like, you know, just take that bit with a grain of salt, Amrit. Um, but you fast forward now and I'm like, oh, holy crap. Like I designed my entire life around where I feel flow, which is yeah. connection, contribution, celebration, podcasting, mm -hmm. coaching, speaking. Now, admittedly, when you look at the work of Flow Research Collective, they're working with like high performers and they're trying to like optimize distractions and dopamine and endorphin, like all this sort of stuff, which is like in the moment, how can you tap into flow? But, you know, the TED talk that I've coined and put together, you know, what we've been discussing today for me is what I, what I've, I don't want to say trademarked, but we had to go do this because there's also a 3D reality that exists um, <laughs> called Metaflow, right? It's Metaflow. It's like flow on a higher level. Yeah. 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 Um, so like you being in conjunction to your personality lining up to your spirit, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, and the flow that happens there, the spaciousness, the richness, the effortlessness, like this this conversation, like the fact that I get to in, like, you know, share so much with you so deeply, so richly, um, is such a blessing. It's a reward within mm. itself, wholeheartedly, yeah. right? Mm. And then this is gonna reach somebody, they're gonna tune in, they're gonna discover their values. They may email me and be like, bro, like that was amazing. Thank you so much. And just what that means, it's like, oh my God, like I was here and I got to connect to one other person, to Gary, through Gary, to mm. another person, and now their their experience is richer, they're contributing. And I like you just light up as a Christmas tree. It is yeah. a self-rewarding mechanism. And living life that way, when you're like lighting up, energy comes back to you, right? Like yeah. right now, back to where we said before, like I'm a little bit sleep deprived. Um, 
But this conversation, as you can tell, like the words are tumbling out of my mouth and I was just like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like I'm energized, I'm enthusiastic, I'm excited because I'm doing what touch what I'm meant to be doing. Now, this is convenient because I love conscious conversation. For everybody, there's a thing, right? Some people it's pottery. Some people it's, you know, it's business. Everybody has their own thing. Um, mm -hmm. And that's how the energy, like they just become energized in the activity that they're doing. So in this conversation with you right now, it may look like or feel like work in some ways that even as I said that it sounds so foreign because it feels entirely like play, right? Mm. It feels entirely like what you started with, like joy, yeah. happiness, um, yeah. touch wood, you know? So it is self-rewarding if that is, yeah. Does that yeah. answer your question? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I think the, one of the most important things you said is it feels like play. That's the big difference. I mean, I think that's where it all leads to in whatever, um, whatever the flow, however it flows into our life, whatever endeavor we decide to take, you know, maybe we paint, drive race cars, do podcasts, whatever it is, there's a sort of play, a childlike play, right? Think about when we were children playing on the playground, we were just in it. And it was just like this dream state. I feel that man. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel that. <sighs> and truly enjoying the experience, you know, and the flow of it and enjoying, I think you said something like you enjoy the journey, just, just like you enjoy the creative process just for the sake of the creative process. And yes, there may be people that hit you up and want to work with you coming from it, but it's not even about that. It's just about whatever you're doing in that moment. And you just get lost in that. You almost die into that. You know, that becomes the meditation in itself. It's powerful stuff, man. And I feel it for sure. I definitely feel it when I come on and have talks with you and other people also attest as well. Like this flow state, it's not just like hippie talk. It's not just us just BSing right now. It's real. This is some mm -hmm. kind of real state that you can tap into. I mean, I think everyone knows it's a thing. I don't know if everyone is able to, well, everyone is able to, but not everyone knows they're able to tap into the flow state, being in the flow, going with the flow. It's real. It's definitely real. And I think that's where life is most interesting, to say the least, is when you're in the flow state. It's the most, um, it's the most like, I don't know, enjoyable at least, to mm -hmm. keep it simple, you know? Can I extrapolate just Please. before you ask yeah, a question? Course. Just a yeah. little bit, just chuck something in there. Mm -hmm. Also, like, you know, the just what you just described is like you know grassroots up like you know how great it feels to be in flow mm -hmm. but there's also like and i i guess just due to the nature of your your podcast and you know the spiritual lens that's afforded to us in this in this container we can also have a look at and i can't describe this i can't articulate this right but there is it is kind of trippy because when you're in alignment call it universe call it creation call it creator call it whatever you want to helps remove obstacles out of your way like I, and things drop in that otherwise like would have been so foreign like i don't know how else to describe this but like through my coaching journey like through my podcasting journey through the journey of the inspired evolution like being coached by some of these mentors like how they appeared in my world is like i could just spend six months with eckhart toll like what the what the like mm -hmm. what is going what you know like yeah. literally and even to today like i say that and i'm like yeah, that happened. I remember that. Like my memory has a memory of that happening. Like what the actual, and it's like, yeah, but you were in alignment. So when you're in alignment, things open up, things drop in yep. that feel like what, like, and all your self-worth stuff comes up. It's still coming up for me. It's like, you know, and it's like, who am I even to be? And it's like, yes, but you are on your path, you yeah. know? Um, and so things that are meant to magnetize and be attracted towards you and help you facilitate your path and journey in a really rich way are not being blocked because your personality is blocking all the stuff, trying to do all the things like lined up to her. It's got the experience of like, oh yeah, this is who I am. This is what I'm doing. And then everything else sort of tumbles in around it as well. And if there are obstacles, they sort of move out of the way a little bit as well. Touch wood. Now, how do you explain that, quantify that without, you know, it is, I guess, somewhat metaphysical and, you know, it's just me trying to articulate um, mm. what's possible mm -hmm. as well from the top down, yeah. as well as what you were describing before the flow from the bottom up. Touch yeah, wood. man. Mm. Oh, all right, so this one may be a little esoteric, but let's let's try and go there. Where, not where, yeah, okay. Where does this all end up? Because it seems like it's coming from the top down, you said, right? If once we align with a certain value set, then we act accordingly in the world and we go with the flow. 
um where does this come from you know why why what is the purpose of this and what is being created through all of our pursuits in this flow state because obviously it seems to be working toward something we do find an inherent purpose in our life right but what is the greater purpose if we could try to even explain that do we even know where it's going um you know what what is the the value sets leading us into would you say yeah if i could answer that question i'd probably have an easier time adopting that guru moniker (laughs) (laughs) yeah Uh, but i won't i won't leave you hanging like that as well so um (laughs) that to sort of say the question of like why are we here what is the purpose of life um is you know at some point in my journey i've just had to come to terms with these there's been a lot of great minds a lot of great hearts um somewhat bigger than mine intelligent mind that have contemplated these things as well and i've learned from a lot of them just through you know they were gracious enough to write um and leave back a lot of information um yeah but at the same time they weren't able to nut it out either and people have been asking this question forever yeah yeah um literally yeah (laughs) and the the key thing there I was reading a quote the other day and it's like it, I think it was Ralph Waldo Emerson, but then Emerson is also the guy that gets all the quotes attributed to him when you don't know who it is. So it might not be, so pardon me for that. Um, But it's, you know, and I'm going to butcher the crap out of it, but pardon me, but it's kind of like it's enough to know the laws of nature, Mm -hmm. let alone why or where they came from and how they operate. Yeah. Right. And where it's Um, going. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's enough to just know the law. Like, even that is a whole body of work unto itself for one individual's lifetime to know the laws of nature. Yeah. Um, and so all of that to say, yes, absolutely, even through everything I learned from Eckhart Tolle um, informs this in a great way. Like, you know, he talks about you have this outer purpose and the outer purpose is the purpose of life. It's a wave. I look at it as a wave and this is how I describe it in the TED Talk, which is, you know, like life is a wave yeah um but where are all the little water molecules in that wave and so in order for the wave to be able to wave and do its thing with structural integrity part of me that's the engineer in me talking now um each molecule needs to do its thing right each molecule needs to be exactly in its place so we all have an inner purpose right we're all these little water molecules and now again we feel flow when we're exactly in the wave where we're meant to be yeah. We're not trying to be somebody else in the wave because that spot looks more illustrious, that gets a bit more sunlight or mm-hmm. that, you know, looks in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Just come back to where you are, feel that flow. Now, what is the purpose of the outer wave doing its wave thing is the nature of your question. And it's like, life is lifing. Mm. <laughs> At some point, you've got to come to terms with acceptance and surrender. Um, it's quite a spiritual evolution and a journey to get there. Well, it has been for me. Um, touch wood, I don't want to sound elitist in any way. It, it's just been a journey for me to come to terms and grips with, okay, life is doing its life thing and you know i'm never really going to know why life is doing its life thing um one of the richest places i've found to understand more around this is a lot of hindu texts um they've got all the different yugs all the different ages you know how close we are to the light how farther away we are from light you know and sort of what is meant to happen in the different ages um it's useful to know but at the same time once you start to learn all that and know all that it changes your experience somewhat, but you're still living in the present moment, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, so it's good to know. It's nice to know, um, especially if you've got, like me, you're like knowledge sort of craver. Um, but at the same time, it you know, the experience is, an, is a, uh, sorry, reality and the human experience is, a, is an experiential thing. Um, mm-hmm. You need to be present in it. So all of that to say the wave and the life has its life thing people have been trying to contemplate why life is doing what it's doing why the universe is looking in on itself what is it trying to find out about itself some of the sage and the mystics uh, especially from the sufi sort of line will be like well it just it wants to you know love is a beautiful thing and it just wants to love and experience itself and learn to love itself and that's why self-love is of the highest order yeah um you know there's some great you know pockets that you can explore in and around there Uh, but ultimately yeah, our job is to come back to my, well, I see my responsibility as being helping people come back to who they are and find themselves in that overarching wave and just be like, hey, you are here. What are you here to do and what can you enjoy, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, in the process of life lifing? What is life asking of you um, mm-hmm. to life at the moment? If that makes sense. <laughs> what is life asking mm-hmm. of you to life at the moment? <laughs> Amen to that. Gotcha. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, it is. It is that simple. You could get into the different yugas and see, you know, look at life in a span of what millions of years, how they look at it. You could look at it like that and say, where is this all going? I definitely do. I definitely had a lot of late nights where I'm contemplating, like, what is all this about? But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, true, we're just living our simple human lives here in the 21st century. And it doesn't really matter, per se, where it's all going, if we could even explain it or figure it out. Not that we can, but if we could, it doesn't matter anyway. So yeah, keep it simple, man. I like that message. Keep it simple. But do you feel at least from our touching upon our value sets and allowing others to do as well, we're creating a better world. You know, we're creating a world that is more cohesive. Like when we all tap into this, imagine like hypothetically, when we all, if we could all tap into this said flow all be aligned with the wave right now, just like this. Oh, everybody's aligned. How different would the world look? It would look completely different. So maybe in the grand scheme of things, we don't know where it's going, but I could say, well, I think we're actually building a better world. Like when we're all aligned, naturally it just seems like we're building just this, um, it may seem grandiose, but we're building more of a heaven-like state on earth. It may seem esoteric, grandiose, like I said, but I think it's like, it's just a better world we're building for individuals, our individual self, but also each other and future generations as well. If not, then it's like, well, what are we really doing it for? <laughs> you know, a sort of selflessness, I guess, is what I'm getting at, you know? Mm. Yeah. I want to take what you just said and put that as the trailer for the inspired evolution. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's, you know, and that's where you asked in the beginning, like, you know, inspired evolution, what's it to you? And I was like, yeah, like for me, this is what it's, this is what it's facilitated thus far, mm. touch wood. Um, and that it has this massive vision behind it. And it's hard to articulate, but you just did an amazing job of articulating it, right? Like, and yes, you're right. It's huge. It's massive. And, you know, maybe I've drunk too much of my own Kool-Aid, but <laughs> what we can discern in the conversation that we're having just at this particular juncture is just the frequency of frazzle. Let's just call it that or frustration or angst or, you know, existential angst, existential frazzle. Like brrr, when you're doing something that is not in alignment, there's this pent up, brrr, yeah. you can feel it, right? Mm -hmm. One in two in the world are walking around anxious or depressed at this stage in time. Like what? That is huge. Yeah. It's such a harrowing statistic. That's really the number? Yeah. Like one in that's two? The, that's the number, one in two. And that's what one we know of too. It's probably Anxious even or more. depressed. Yeah. Wow. It's full on, bro. It's full on. I believe it. Yeah. And so when you feel that frequency, like that that's carrying, and then you think about the frequency of flow and just the calm and the peace that, that is naturally impregnated in that and the, and the joy. Touchwood, you just think about there being more of this in the world as opposed to that. I know it's still quite esoteric because we're talking about frequency and vibration, but nonetheless... It gives you a bit of a whoa, <laughs> you know. It's touch wood. It's quite inspiring to mm. evolve into that direction. But Amen. The pun. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yes. Amen. It is quite inspiring. Um. Yeah, man. I think um that's what we're doing ultimately is we're we're just helping build a better world. We're inspiring each other. We're inspiring ourselves, and we are inspiring each other to build a better life. So that statistic hopefully goes down in the future, man. Because that's that's huge 50 percent of people just are don't want to be here essentially or they're just feeling like a sense of disease with their life a lack of purpose sense of nihilism oh man that's tough yeah i just don't think that's how it's supposed to be man that's not how it's supposed to be and ultimately like you said in the beginning that stuff is ultimately what brings us to how it's supposed to be so that's the silver lining in this whole thing and that statistic is ultimately i do think someday and maybe this is my idealism speaking is someday we will all get aligned so we won't even have depression anxiety really you know this may be hundreds and hundreds of years in the future generations past us but i think um we're going to get to a point where we all just naturally feel inspired and we don't have this like depression anxiety mental illness altogether will be a thing of the past i really do believe that i do believe that um but yeah, Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> it's mm. going to take a little time and uh, that's it. It's about the journey, right? Like we talked about. It's cliche. I'm pretty sure we've all heard it before. But that's what it's all about. Is It's all about the journey. Be here now, as they say, right? Mm. But we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, Yeah, man. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have really anything else to say. I think that's a good note to wrap it up at, to be honest with you. This conversation flew by. 
<laughs> it's been about an hour, but it's like, wow, I feel like we've only been talking for like five minutes. That's the flow state. That's the timeless the flow state, bro. That's literally how it feels. Timelessness, effort, like time dissolves, right? Touch yeah. That's exactly what we've been talking about. Yeah. Um, strange. Yeah. Very strange. Yeah. It's mystical, isn't it? It's brilliant. Touch wood. Touch wood. <laughs> well, yeah, man. Do you have any... Um, Anything you want to say, like anything you want to get off your chest before we stop recording or you want to just keep it at that? Yeah, look, the message in my heart is basically that your health is your purpose and your purpose is your health after everything we've discussed. And a lot of people feeling out of alignment, you'll notice that, you know, it's your mental health that's compromised. Um, and, you know, like we said, that mental health being compromised, that's your personality. So it's calling you back into it's like into a purpose. message, so right? You may not give a shit about your purpose, part of my French, but mm -hmm. you probably do care about your health. <laughs> yeah. So you, in order to calibrate, like it's worth calibrating to purpose for your health's sake, yeah. <laughs> right? If I can say that. So that's what's tattooed on the inside of my heart. Not actually inked, but, you know, literally like spiritually, um, that your health is your purpose and your purpose is your health. And they're one and the same and the exact same thing. And for the longest while I thought I was this you know, unique person carrying this message. But, you know, when you look into Vedic science, the whole purpose of Ayurveda, which is a science, you know, yoga sits underneath that umbrella and all that sort of stuff, is here to facilitate your dharma. And your dharma is the reason you're here. It's your purpose. So all of that body of health is like, you know, let's understand your constitution, facilitate your health so you can go and do what you're meant to do with the world. When you mm. put it that way, even the left logic brain from the West, you know, sort of kind of gets it. And I don't want to talk down to the West logic brain, but... Um, there's a lot more that it can open up to. Maybe let's just put it that way. That's very true. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's what's there. And ultimately, just the same thing that I said before, like people have been tuning into this conversation. Hopefully it's affording them a lot of clarity. Um, and you could have the clarity in bed, like those listening in, you could have the clarity in your life. 20 minutes from now, you could be as crystal clear on your values as I am on mine. Yeah, inspiredevolution.com forward slash values. And it's still, I find it, I don't want to say the word harrowing, but I find it somewhat like, still don't get why people just won't go do it. <laughs> it just, it just eats so much more ease and flow and abundance and just fluidity is available to you in your life once you know your values. Mm -hmm. um, 20 minutes of your time just to sort of watch a masterclass and do a quick couple of exercises and you'll have your values. Like, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. My yeah. humble invitation to you. There it is, man. Yeah, it's worth it. At the end of the day, I guess to sum this whole thing up is it's worth it to tap into oneself, to tap into one's values. It truly is. Um, I compare myself to before I started to tap in, look within, maybe like, I don't know, I've only been on this for like five years, probably maybe a little, a little longer, but say five years, the Gary before to the Gary after it's night, mm -hmm. night and day, night and day. I just have totally different lifestyle, different way that I speak, different way that I just feel altogether about life. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's worth it. I can't attest to that enough. And thankfully there's people out there like you that assist others into their value sets That's and true. inspire others. Seriously um so yeah man i appreciate you coming on here i really do i think this is an awesome talk keep doing your thing you're definitely a real one i feel your spirit i feel your energy through time and space something special about you so mm -hmm. keep thank doing you. your thing man i really thank, thank you thank you <laughs> thank you so much brother man that really means a lot to me especially coming from you and just yeah the epicness of your podcast and the guests that you've had on and just the frequency that you share with the world it's it's really humbling to be here to share that share with you and just to receive such incredible feedback. Really appreciate you and everything you're up to in the world, bro. Thank you so much. Gary. Thank you. My yeah. pleasure. Right back great. at you. Um, that's it. Peace and love to you and peace and love to anybody that listened this long. Goodbye.